In this video, you're gonna learn some of the most valuable tips and tricks and settings for the iPhone, 15 tips and tricks to be precise. And trust me, these are features you don't want to forget. So save the link to this video in a quick note right now. Wait a minute, I haven't showed you how to do that yet. And before I do, let me show you this hidden gem of a trick. Do you ever find long website links challenging to copy sometimes, or sometimes they're just generally too long even to paste into an email? Well, if the answer is yes, I think you're gonna like this one. Search your iPhone's library for the official Apple Shortcut app. Now within the Shortcuts app, go to the gallery tab at the bottom and search in the search bar at the top for shorten URL. Now hit the little plus on this to add it to your shortcuts. Now, whenever you hit the share button, you'll have the option to shorten the link on the share sheet, which is this page you see here. And when you tap shorten URL, you'll see it running at the top of the screen. You will need to allow it. And when you use it, the link is automatically copied to the clipboard. And now you can simply paste it, but not the long version, the short version. But before you go and paste that somewhere, Let's level up your note taking game with that quick note tip that I mentioned in the intro. Go to settings, go to control center, scroll down and hit the plus next to quick note. Now this is not to be confused with the regular notes. We're looking for quick notes. Hit the little plus next to it and you'll see it's now here at the bottom of our control center settings. And now when you're on Safari and you discover a fantastic website like this one right here, and you want to remember it and take notes on why you want to remember it, you can do so in just two moves. Swipe down from the top right corner, hit the little quick notes icon, which is this one here, it's the square with the squiggly line inside. And you'll notice straight away, it gives you the option to add the link to that website to the quick note. And here we can write the reason why we want to keep this note safe. So that's how to do quick, quick notes. And remember this one works well with pretty much all of the first party Apple apps. Third party apps is a bit of a question mark. So you'll have to test it out and see how you get on. It's a very noisy world. And if you want to make things very clear and easy to understand amidst the noise, you're gonna love this hidden setting. First of all, make sure your language is set to English US. So to do that, go to general, go to language and region and change it to English US. Now, once you've done that, scroll down to accessibility and scroll down and you will see this option, live captions beta. Now it's important to remember how you got to this page because there's some settings here called appearance where you can change the style of the captions so that you can tailor the appearance of the captions to make them comfortable for your eyes. Now, let me show you how the live captions work. See this floating speech bubble here? If you tap this, you can expand the live captions. And at any time, if you want to pause the live captioning, you can just hit the pause button here. You can drag it around on the screen however you want and you can expand it to full screen if needed. And if you want it to stop listening, just hit the pause button. And see the little microphone here? If you hit that, that begins to transcribe using the mics on the phone and it will transcribe everything that's happening around you. And as you can see right now, it's transcribing what I'm saying word for word. And when you don't need it, you can minimize it down to the little speech bubble again and just place it anywhere you want on the screen. Okay, so live transcribing is fantastic for our noisy world. And sometimes in the silence, it's no longer needed. And at this point in time, you might find that floating speech bubble a little bit annoying. So let's set up a quick way to switch this feature on and off with three clicks of a button. Go to settings, go to control center, scroll down to the bottom here and add the accessibility shortcut. Now, when you swipe down from the top right corner, you'll see the accessibility icon here, the little man with the circle around him. If you tap this button, the first time, it will take you to settings, accessibility, and accessibility shortcuts. And because I've done this before, I had to manually navigate there, it will take you there automatically. And here is where you can choose what the triple tap does on the power button, and I have it set to live captions. So now when I push the button on the side three times, you'll see the little speech bubble disappears. 
And next time I'm watching an amazing YouTube video like this one, I can triple tap the power button and you'll see the live caption option pops up. And then once again, we can live transcribe whatever we're watching on the screen. And the great thing about this is the volume can be at zero and it will still continue to live transcribe. And this works across all apps on the device. Okay, so now you can toggle on and off the newfound iPhone superpower whenever you want. And with great power comes great responsibility. Hopefully you see what I'm saying here. Try not to use this secret feature to eavesdrop on people. Sometimes when you're using your iPhone, your eyes can deceive you. And sometimes on your phone, there's more than meets the eye. Here's a trick to help you see better details. Go to settings, scroll down to accessibility, and go here where it says zoom, and then enable the zoom feature. Now, can you see this text here just below where it says zoom? If you can't, check it out. If you triple tap with three digits, it can be any three digits, anywhere on the screen, it will zoom in. And then you can drag around the zoom with three fingers as well. So if you couldn't see it before, hopefully you can see it now. Double tap with three fingers, and there we go, we're zoomed all the way back out. And if the amount of zoom isn't the right amount for you, then you can adjust the zoom level here at the bottom with this slider. So hopefully this will help you see more clearly. Okay, a picture is worth a thousand words because they can tell a story. And nowadays they're worth even more than that because they can offer helpful information such as the names of buildings and even the types of wildlife, for example, flowers. And it's quite simple really. Check this out. For example, let's say I took this photo of this particular flower once upon a time and at a later date, I decided I wanted to buy some of these for my garden. Now, I know zero about flowers, but what I do know, if I ever see a photo within my photo app with the little eye icon and the sparkle coming off the top left corner, that means that the phone has recognized what's in the picture. And if you tap that, you'll see a little leaf pops up here, indicating that it recognizes this part of the image. And when you tap that, it gives you the name of the flower. And now you can understand why pictures can be worth 10,000 words these days, because there's no way that I would be able to memorize a name like this. And this visual lookup feature is constantly improving. So test it out within the photos you've taken and see what it can see. And for example, if it's a building like this and you hit the little eye button here and nothing pops up on the picture, where it says look up here, if you tap the landmark, it will show you what landmark that is. And if you wanna find your way back to that spot, there's even a little map coordinate here to tap on. Now here is a quick one, similar to the photo lookup feature, except this is the audio version of that. And to enable it, it's easy. Go to your settings, go to your control center, scroll down and look for this music recognition and hit the little plus icon next to it. And now you'll see it at the bottom of the included controls. And if you want to, you can move it around, move it to the top if you like. Now, when you swipe down from the top right corner of your home screen, you will see this icon here that looks like a Shazam button. And in fact, it is a Shazam button because Apple bought Shazam because they were arguably one of the best apps for identifying music. And now the next time you hear a soundtrack that you like and you want to identify it quickly, just swipe down, tap the Shazam button and all shall be revealed. Do you remember what it was like when you used to get a call on an old iPhone and the incoming call would fill the entire screen? Well, a lot of people actually preferred that call of display method. And if you're one of those people, or this is something you've never seen before, try this out. Go to settings, go to phone. And here, if you enable the full screen alert instead of the smaller banner style at the top of the device, one advantage that you'll have is that you're less likely to miss a call if your phone is muted. And here's a bonus trick for you. It's another quick solution for the same problem of potentially missing a call only do this one if you're okay with being a bit flashy. Go to settings, accessibility, audio and visual. And here at the bottom of this page, you'll see LED flash for alerts. Have you ever been like, dude, where's my car? Because you've parked it somewhere in a car park that you can remember, or maybe you parked somewhere in a new city that you visited 
and you just couldn't remember where it was. And maybe this hasn't happened to you, maybe it happened to your friend, and you don't want it to happen to you. So if that's you, you should enable this setting. Go to settings, go to maps, go all the way down the bottom of this page to where you see show parked location. And while we're here, double check this, scroll all the way back to the top and check the location here. Make sure you have while using the app or widgets and also make sure you've enabled precise location. Now here's the disclaimer, this will only work if you use Apple Maps as your default navigator and it won't work if someone steals your car. And if you do find yourself in that situation, maybe you should hit up Lou from Unbox Therapy. I heard he's like Batman in a Taycan when it comes to stolen cars. Or you could always remember to hide an air tag somewhere inside the vehicle and that could maybe help you get it back too. Now the measure of success here on YouTube is often represented by the subscriber count and the biggest YouTubers out there today with millions and millions of subscribers will often tell you it's not a big deal to them. But you know what? It's a big deal to me, so if you wouldn't mind, I would really appreciate it. Okay, back to what I was saying about measurements. The word is derived from Latin and the word metron meaning a limited proportion and your iPhone can actually measure limited proportions with its camera and its light detection ranging sensors. And to use this, all you need to do is simply search for the measure app. This enables the camera. Now what makes this tool such a valuable one is this ability to map multi dimensions, for example, height, width, and depth. And then if you want to keep a record of everything you've measured, you can then tap the top left corner and copy and paste it into a quick note. And you already know how to do that. So let's not waste any more time and move on. Most of us don't have a photographic memory, but actually if you have an iPhone, you kind of do because if you go to your photos app and then the for you section at the bottom, what you'll see here is that your phone has compiled a collection of photos based on locations and dates and familiar faces and pets and even food. And if you select one, then tap it, you can actually hit this little button down here to change the music and the filters. And there's default filters that you can switch between, or if you want to go in manually, you can hit the button down here, the little musical note will let you choose a song for that particular photo and video collection. And then you can also manually choose a specific filter that you like. And then the great thing about this is once you've finished, if you hit the share button at the top, so you can save it and share it as a video, which means it's viewable on any phone, even if it's not an iPhone. So here's a quick one. Next time you find yourself on Safari again, and you need to manually type in a website address, remember this quick tip because it's a good one. If you hold your finger down on the full stop key, you'll see a window pops up with a bunch of different suffixes to add to the web address. So you don't have to type it out. And this is just designed to help you save time. And as you know, time is of the essence. So let's keep moving. Sometimes you might want to FaceTime your friends or family members. And if you set this up, you can save time when it comes to actually using FaceTime in the future. To do this, we need to go back to the Apple Shortcuts app. At the top of this page, hit the little plus icon in the top right corner. Here we need to add an action and you can type FaceTime and select it here. Now in this top section where it says contact, we need to choose who we're gonna call. If we hit the little drop down here, we can name this shortcut to whatever we like. And here we have our shortcut. Now to customize the icon, hit the three dots on the shortcut. Hit the little eye icon at the bottom of this page. And at the top here, you'll see add to home screen. And then here where you see the icon with the blue square around it, tap that. And here we can choose a photo to add as the icon. So next time, if there's something strange going on in your neighborhood and it don't look good, who are you gonna call? Well, you've got the perfect FaceTime contact set up in advance. So you better think about who you're gonna call. So you already know your iPhone has fantastic security as long as you keep your device up to date. And if you ever get hacked, you might ask yourself, how could this have happened? Well, the iPhone is like a digital vault, but human error can introduce vulnerabilities. And how would you know if that happened? Well, here's how. Go to settings, go to privacy and security, 
scroll all the way down to the bottom of this page where you see safety check. And depending on how concerned you are, you might want to go with option one, which is the emergency reset. This strips back all app access and people's access to your device and your data, and you can start afresh. Or if you just wanna check who and what has access to your data right now, you could go for the manage sharing and access option. And there are three simple steps to this process. And if you do this now, this could be an eye-opening experience for you. Take a look. Okay, speed and power. Can you really have one without the other? Well, when it comes to an iPhone, at this point in time, you can't. You must have power. And what's interesting about Apple's approach to the iPhone is when your phone's battery begins to chemically degrade, your phone's AI will step in and throttle your device's performance because it thinks it's helping you out. And let's just hope that ChatGPT doesn't realize that the world is chemically degrading because if it does and it finally gets its hands on some Boston Dynamic tech, then we could all really be in trouble. Anyway, let me show you how to check if your Apple iPhone's Bionic AI isn't slowing down your phone intentionally. So let's do this. Go to settings, go to battery. Here you want to go to battery health and charging. Now this section here is the one you wanna keep an eye on. If this shows peak performance capability and what you see here underneath it, you're all right. Also keep an eye on the percentage of maximum capacity. This will drop with age, and then at some point this will change. To say something along the lines of your device's performance is being managed. This means the AI is trying to prolong the longevity of your device by stripping back some of the performance capabilities, and maybe you don't want that. So if you do get that message, you'll also have a bit of blue writing here that says disable. And if you tap that, you will boost your iPhone's performance back to the optimal performance that the device is capable of before the throttling. However, it's important to remember it is a balancing act. So if you have more speed, you're gonna have less power. So that's an important decision you need to make. What do you want? speed or power. And while you're here, a word to the wise, enable optimized battery charging. It learns your charging patterns and ensures you don't redline the battery charging too much when left charging for long periods of time. So you know, sometimes we spend too much time on our phones and sometimes we should free our minds and power it down. And when we do, wouldn't it be nice if there was a power down sound, sort of like what an Apple Mac or a MacBook does? Well, you can have it if you like, and it's easy to set up. Go to settings, go to accessibility, go to audio and visual, and enable power on and power off sounds. And on that note, if you wanna see more tips and tricks from me on other Apple products like the AirPods Pro or the new Apple Watch, there's some thumbnails on screen right now, go check those out. And if you do, I will see you in the next one. Don't be late.